Good evening, dear friends. I welcome you on the screens of your YouTube receivers. I am sincerely glad for those who watch this video, because in it, we will figure out the reason for our aging, why it starts, and how to overcome it. How to fully receive both the insurance and the accumulative part of the pension because we pay for them all our life, we pay them, and we also want to take it back. Therefore, friends, the muscles from which aging begins need to be kept in perfect condition because our health and our eternal youth depend on them. So friends, from bottom to top, let's start. The first is the calf muscle. Let's list two gluteal muscles. The third is the muscle lifting, the scapula, forsternoclavicular mastoid, muscle and neck extensor. We will take together as a complex and another secret fifth muscle about which only the most curious subscribers will learn. We will talk about it a little later, dear friends. So from bottom to top, we rise. The calf muscle. What is the importance? You ask, and I will answer that it plays a huge role in blood circulation. So friends, pay attention. We have a heart muscle that creates with its work. The possibility of our blood to circulate throughout the body the aorta departs from our heart, then it divides into arteries, arterioles, capillaries, and supplies every cell of our body with blood, with arterial blood rich in oxygen. Then, after the blood has performed its function, it is collected in the venous system. And here arises one problem. The furthest point you see, the force of gravity still acts on us. The most difficult place from which the blood, it's all so interesting with you. We are designed in such a way that blood flows through the veins, and the veins have a certain system to prevent backflow and stagnation. This is the valve system of the veins. Here, the blood goes. The venous valve opened. It passed here, yes, and the valve closed once backwards so that it doesn't go down. But all this will only work according to the condition that the muscles help circulate the blood. The calf muscle performs this function here. The calf muscle is like a pump. That is, it compresses the venous vessels during its tension and the blood rises back up. Unfortunately, the calf muscle tends to be weak and instead the soleus muscle begins to perform its function. This is a more internal layer of muscle located beneath it are the flexors of the fingers. Beneath them is the posterior tibial muscle, which also strengthens the interosseous membrane, preventing the fibula from wobbling. The work of the calf muscle is directly related to blood circulation. If we have any problems from this, that is, if, as a result of the weakness of the calf muscle, venous flow is disrupted, the most harmless thing is varicose veins await us because the blood can no longer fully rise up through the venous vessels because the load from the calf muscle when walking is shifted to deeper muscles. For them, this is very hard, so these muscles do not work like the calf muscle. The calf muscle is... The flexor of the fingers the posterior tibial muscle, and partially the soleus muscle, they are forced to constantly maintain their tension. Because of this, spasms squeeze the deep veins, and the blood is forced to drain through the superficial subcutaneous veins. This causes their expansion, and we will see varicose veins here. Friends, let's say we have such a system as a heating system. We have a boiler with a pump with us. It heats hot water. Hot water is like arterial blood, and through all the pipes, with the help of a pump, this hot water is released. And this is the farthest, most inaccessible place. And if we also have in this inaccessible place, something is too narrow a pipe, or something interferes with the inflow outflow from here, then this system, the pump here in the boiler, it is forced to create more pressure to push this blood. And the same system we have in the body 
turns out. It is necessary to increase the pressure here. It is necessary to increase the pressure here. So this is one of the reasons for the development of hypertension. One of the reasons for the increase in pressure in the general system to return blood from the farthest, most accessible point because the system that will help this blood return back does not work. So friends, we realize the importance of the calf muscle. Let's move on. The gluteal muscle, the gluteal muscle. It is needed not only for beauty, not only to sit softly on hard chairs. It also has a great importance in the following cases. First, it supports the correct position of the pelvis, supports the correct posture. When it is weak, the pelvis turns here, does not hold. When the gluteal muscle is weak during walking, all the load goes to the square muscle of the lower back. During each step, such excessive movement occurs. This movement causes narrowing of the intervertebral holes. Here, the nerve roots are compressed. Pain, osteoarthritis, impaired mobility in the lumbar spine. When the position of the pelvis changes, the position of the upper part reflexively changes, the entire spine changes its position. You need to have good gluteal muscles not only to attract partners for reproduction, but also so that your reproductive organs work like clockwork. That's right. As we move up, we are met by the neck muscles. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the neck extensor. These two muscles, they play a huge role in the blood supply to our brain because the carotid artery runs under the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The common carotid artery splits into the external and internal. Under the long extensor of the neck, the short extensors of the neck, here they affect the condition of our vertebral artery. The neck's long extensor isn't functioning, short ones are strained, and the vertebral artery is constricted. The first vertebra, the atlas, about five, six years ago, it was very popular to put the atlas in its place. Various fraudsters would come around put your atlas in place so all your diseases would go away. But you don't need to put the atlas in place. If your atlas is in place, nothing good will come of it. You won't be able to turn your head. You won't be able to move. It should move. The atlas should be mobile. That is, the vertebra itself should move in the directions provided for by the design. For this, both the long neck extensors and the short neck extensors must be in good condition. And in its movement, it should not compress anything neither the vertebral artery nor the occipital nerve. If the posterior muscles are not functioning well, these are the neck extensors. Long and short, problems with dizziness, balance, headaches, vertigo, hearing loss, coordination impairment can occur. I'll reiterate about dizziness, even if I've said it twice before. The sternocleidomastoid muscle. The carotid artery is underneath it. Of course, this doesn't mean that if your sternocleidomastoid muscle is weak, you constantly want to sleep. This means that it affects the condition of the carotid arteries. Do you know why the carotid artery is named so? If you squeeze it, you'll fall asleep. And if you squeeze it for too long, that's it, a stroke. Ischemic, hemorrhagic, a vessel could burst there. Therefore, the condition of the neck muscles primarily affects the condition of our brain, vision organs, olfactory organs, all sensory organs, even the regulation of all internal organs, because all this is connected with the brain's work. Also, memory of the past and the ability to remember something new is also connected with the blood supply to the brain. And the next muscle is the muscle that lifts the scapula. The muscle that lifts the scapula, unfortunately, it also quickly breaks down. It needs to be constantly kept in good condition because it is also such a muscle that is prone to rapid aging and cessation of its work. How is it shown? The shoulders move forward and down. The function of this muscle supports the shoulder at a certain height. When we make movements with our arms, two muscles work, the trapezius muscles, lifting the scapula. But because most of our movements are made with our hands forward, we rarely do something like this with our hands behind, mainly doing something forward. The main load should be on the muscles, on the muscle elevating the scapula, which should be in perfect shape. 
because when it drops, there is excessive pressure on the upper ribs. They stop moving with you and our lung volume decreases. We can't breathe fully with you. It also affects the mobility of the neck, indirectly affects the state of blood supply to the brain and the function of the lungs. We can't breathe, our lungs are stagnant. There's nothing good. The oxygen level is dropping. The blood supply to the brain is decreasing. Our life is getting shorter. That's why all these muscles we have to maintain in perfect condition. So, friends, and now all these muscles we will start to bring into. Not just order, but they should be in very good condition for us. Let's start with the calf muscle, the importance of which you all already know. Hence, it's crucial to hold and respect it. So, to work on the calf muscle, we take a roller, this special one for massage. We lie down. And, uh... Our task with you is to work through the entire calf muscle. If you saw... different ways... of myofascial release, they roll the muscle like this. That is, back and forth, this is a useless method. You need to work the muscle across, starting from the Achilles tendon, just like this, and divide the entire muscle into three parts. You will have an inner part, a middle, and an outer part. And along each line, you move upwards. That is, you are acting across the fibers of your own calf muscle. You're working through each area. If you find a painful area, you stop on it. You can spend up to five minutes on the calf muscle. If it hurts a lot, just hold your leg. If it's relatively painless, you can start moving. And this is how you work this muscle up to. The bend of the knee. This needs to be done along all three lines. You can also do this simultaneously. On two legs, just like that. But it's better on one leg. That is, the right and left separately. If you no longer feel pain, your muscles are in good enough condition. You can put your leg on your leg like this to increase the pressure. And in the same way, you work out your calf muscle. Every point, every strand, Every fiber of this muscle should be in perfect condition because you already know how important it is. Strongly and powerfully affects the blood supply system, the circulatory system. That is, every painful point of yours should stop hurting because it depends exactly on this. Blood flow from the legs, from the condition of the calf muscle. Next, the following stage. If you no longer feel anything from the roller, you move on to a ball of various sizes. Starting with a larger one is less painful than a smaller one. And the same thing, you put it here, there will be a more precise impact. You found a painful point and also work through all of them in the same three directions you do. You press through your calf muscle, then you can also use the second leg like this. That is the ball. It gives a more precise impact. So, we've worked through the calf muscle. Now we need to fill it with blood, put some load on it. For this, here's an exercise. We already know, right, that the calf muscle consists of several parts. So we need to put load on the outer and inner parts of this muscle. The position in which you will be... The position in which you will perform this exercise is like this. That is, so that not the weight, the body weight, was on you as if you were loading this muscle not with all the body weight. For this, you lean forward to do more repetitions. Because here, in this exercise, the number of repetitions is especially important. That is, you lean forward, shift the weight forward, and the movement itself will be like this for us. We will be standing on our toes with you, but there will be several positions. First, we place our feet close together, and in this position, we start to rise onto our toes with you. That is, I do this to show you. And you will do it in this position. Because here it is important that the muscle does not work fully under the weight of the body, but slightly relieved. And here you need, look, you need to have... The heel does not drop completely so that the muscle is under load during movement. And here you do from 10 to 30 repetitions until muscle fatigue. Then you rest for about 15-20 seconds. And the next repetition you do in a position where your legs are slightly wider, shoulder width apart, and you do the same thing, the same. 
You go down, rise on your toes, but don't fully put your heel down. That is, we pump the muscle with blood. Next position, we place our legs in this way, heels together, toes to the sides. And the same thing. Here you rise on your toes and do not lower your heel to the end. And the next position is shoulder width apart. And in such a position as well. Why do we adjust positions? Because look, when we put our feet close together, the load will be more on the entire part of the foot and a little closer to the little toe. If we put our feet wide apart, then here we will rely more on that part of the foot that is near the big toe. And thus, on the inner part of the calf muscle. We will put a load on it. So, friends, here we have analyzed one of the first muscles that we have prevent aging. And if it doesn't work, on the contrary, aging approaches. We still have a few muscles left. Gluteal, neck muscles, long extensor, sternocleidomastoid, and one secret muscle. But Time is coming, the video is ending, but how to get all these muscles in order, I have already prepared a complete complex for you, which is on the Boosty website. Link available in description. Go there, we'll meet there. I'll tell and show you everything else in detail there. Just like with the gastric nemius muscle, how to get them in order. So, friends, and for everyone else, goodbye. Until new meetings, we do sports. Help parents, write likes, put likes, write comments, and also put a couple of comments. Well then.